Welcome to the Service Level Expectation VATAS Training. Today we'll cover the employee and supervisor roles for those who are, who are part-time adjustable positions and those who supervise those types of employees. As you can see, we're on the employee menu. The way you can tell if you're an MSLE is that on the employee main menu you have a subsidiary timesheet and a subsidiary timesheet summary. If, as a part-time position, you do not see these two menu options, you do not have a memorandum of service level expectation. Therefore, you don't need to take this training. The first thing that we're going to cover is our schedule. So we're going to click on our schedule menu option. And when you do that, it brings up the schedule that we are scheduled to work. These are the agreed upon hours for that MSLE. This employee is scheduled to work 10 hours in week one and 10 hours in week two for a total of 20 hours in the pay period. It automatically defaults to the current pay period. If you want to see future pay periods, you can use the drop down button and you can go forward to see what your pay periods look like in the future if you want to. But we're going to leave it on pay period four. So that takes care of the schedule menu option. So let's go back to the employee main menu. And this time, we're going to look at our timesheet. The timesheet, not the subsidiary timesheet. The timesheet, notice that we have apply tour, add work, and add leave buttons that are orange, and they have gray writing in it. They are grayed out. The timesheet is posted by your timekeeper, just like it would have been in IFCAP, VISTA, or ETA. Notice that there's currently 10 hours posted on the 23rd, so we're going to click on the 23rd. And when you do that, the timesheet entries in the middle populates, and it shows that we're working from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. that day with a 30-minute meal for 10 hours total. If we scroll across and click on March the 1st, that time is also populated. As an MSLE, your timekeeper posts the timesheet. This is the timesheet that gets transmitted to DFAS for payment. So let's go ahead and go back to our employee main menu. And this time we're going to look at the timesheet summary. The timesheet summary is a snapshot in time, and it's going to give you all the information that you need to know as an employee what's going on with your timesheet. It's going to show you all the hours that the timekeeper has posted, and it's going to give you additional information. As you can see now, it's going to show you that we have 10 hours posted on the 23rd and 10 hours on March the 1st. Below the actual timesheet is the total hours for week one and week two for 20 hours in the week. Below that, you see our schedule and it shows that we're scheduled to work on the first Tuesday and the second Tuesday of the pay period. If we scroll down a little bit, you see again the totals, and it shows week one and week two, and then it has the RG hours for 20, which means the employee did not take any leave during this pay period. Below that, you see remarks, and notice that there are pay period remarks. These remarks have been entered by the timekeeper. It says employees scheduled to work 20 hours this pay period. That's very important because as an MSLE, you need to keep track of the pay periods that you're scheduled to work and the pay periods that you're not scheduled to work. And I will show you what I'm talking about later on. Notice that we have no leave requests and no premium pay requests. And then the leave data here is a brief chopped down version of the leave balances, which we will cover in a little bit. Below that is the timesheet profile. We're going to just show you that you need to review your OX series and title assignment, make sure that it's correct for your appointment type. And then below that starts the entitlements for annual leave, authorized absence, and so forth and so on, including military leave in the right hand corner, right hand side. Below that, we have our session date. The accession date in VATAS is the date that your data was pulled from ETA, IFCAP, or VISTA into VATAS. So if your accession date does not match your normal accession date, please don't be concerned. It's the date that your data was loaded into VATAS. Below that, we have our service comp date. Please make sure that that is correct for your leave accruals. 
And below that, since we are a physician and we're considered a Title 38 employee, we automatically earn eight hours per pay period. Below that, we see our station, our duty station, and our TL unit. In ETA, our TL unit was only three digits. In FATAS, because all the employees are in one database, we had to make the TL unit longer, and it includes the first three digits is the station that you're assigned to, the next two digits is the duty station, and then the last three is the TL number that you would have been in in ETA, MCAP, or VISTA. So let's scroll down to the bottom. Notice that there is a printable version button for this timesheet summary if you need to print it for your own records. And we have a cancel button. So we're going to go ahead and cancel. And the cancel button doesn't cancel that screen or that summary. It just brings you back one menu. Next thing that we're going to talk about is our lead balances. So we're going to click on lead balances. And as a physician, we are not entitled to all the lead that other employee types are, are allowed or authorized. This will show us all the lead types that are available to be earned by all employees. But as a physician, we're entitled to annual leave and sick leave. We're entitled to military leave and family-friendly care and bereavement down in the tracking balances. If you uh, take sick leave and you're taking it to take care of a child, a parent, or a spouse, and you want to use the old CB code in ETA, IFCAP, or VISTA, it's going to track it down here under Family Friendly Sick Leave Care and Bereavement. So as you use that very specific type of leave, it's going to record it there, but it's going to deduct it from your sick leave balances. Below that, we see other leave. If we have leave, uh, if we have a balance in other leave, that is because our schedule had a holiday that fell during our normal scheduled tour of duty, and we were authorized to take off that day instead of coming to work. Also, the old uh, authorized absence in ETA it is now considered administrative leave, and that leave will be captured under the other leave. So please don't think that that's additional leave that you can take. It's just tracking that leave usage. If you are summoned for jury duty, it will fall under court leave. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of here. And now we're going to show you how to do a leave request. So let's click on leave request. And as you can see, we have a pending leave request for 20 hours starting on the 8th of March. So let's go ahead and click on that pending leave request. And when it gets brought up, as you can see, the leave request form in this, in VATAS, looks, looks very identical to the OPM 71. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. And we're going to delete this request because I'm going to show you how to enter it. And it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to delete this request? We're going to say yes. So now we no longer have that leave request, so we're going to click on add leave request. And we're going to use annual leave, so we're going to use our drop-down leave type as LA, annual leave. And we don't have to learn the codes because it spells it out right beside it. And this is going to be on March 8th. And when you hit tab, oh, go ahead, put March 8th. And when you enter the start date, if you hit tab two times, It'll put the same date as the start date. And our schedule is from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. So we're going to type in 8 and hit tab. And it would be 18.30 because we get off at 6.30 p.m. And we hit tab. And notice now it says 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and a 30-minute meal. If 
Your schedule has a 30-minute meal period in there. Please leave the meal time in there. If it does not, all you have to do is use your backspace to delete it off. And then you don't have a meal period, so then it's going to charge you 10 and a half hours. But on our schedule, we know that we have a 30-minute meal period, so we're going to put the 30 minutes back in there. So you just type 30 and hit tab. Hit tab. All right, and it puts the 30 minutes back in there. So now, notice that the total hours are not calculated. The total hours are automatically calculated by VATAS. So when we scroll down to the bottom and hit submit, it will totally calculate the hours for us. And when it brings it back up to the top, you'll see that the hours are now 10. And it does. And because we work Tuesday on week one and Tuesday on week two, we don't want to cross the pay period, so we don't want to put the start date as the 8th and the end date as the 15th. What we need to do is we need to add an additional row. So we're going to click Add New Row. And when that pulls up, we're going to do March 15th. And when we hit tab two times, the end date automatically populates. Again, it's from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And when we hit tab, it automatically puts the meal period in there. And we're going to scroll down and hit submit. And now we have successfully submitted the leave request. And when it scrolls back up to the top, notice that it's 10 hours for the first day and 10 hours for the second day for a total of 20 hours. So let's go ahead and click back on the leave request button. And now you can see that that leave request for 20 hours has been put in there and it's pending, meaning that it's ready for our supervisor to go ahead and hit approve. So let's go ahead and view the calendar. And notice that in February, the 15th was Washington's birthday. If the holiday falls on your day that you have a scheduled tour, please don't request leave during that time. If you want to see what future dates, drop the arrow down. And let's go into July to look to see when July 4th is going to fall this coming year. And as you can see, Independence Day is going to fall on the 4th of uh, July. We do not have a schedule for that day. So as a part-time physician, we are not entitled to holiday leave for that particular pay period. All right. Let's go ahead and go back to the employee main menu. And this time, since we've done the timesheet, the timesheet summary, the leave request, and leave balances, we're going to go into the subsidiary timesheet. As you can see, we have six hours posted on the 25th. But we didn't really work those days. So we're going to go ahead and hit the delete button. And instead, we worked on the 26th. So we're going to click on the 26th. And we're going to add work time. I would encourage you as an employee to only post your subsidiary time sheet after you have worked those hours so that you don't have to have to delete stuff that you didn't work. So we're going to put our start time as 8 a.m. Our stop time as 2 p.m. And the only thing that I'm going to need you to change every time you click on Add Work is the hours type. It automatically defaults to RF, which happens to be the first type of work on the work list. So we're going to drop the arrow down and change it to RG regular grading. And we're going to go ahead and hit Save. And that updates it, and it puts those six hours on the 26th. Notice that we have 10 hours posted on the 29th. Again, we didn't work that day, so we're going to hit delete.
And when those hours are cleared, we came to work on March the 1st, which is our regularly scheduled tour of duty, because when you click on the 1st, notice that the schedule down at the very bottom is highlighted in blue. If you work on the days that your schedule is already populated, all you have to do is hit Apply Tour. So for this day, we're going to click Apply Tour instead of Add Work. When we do that, it will automatically populate the entries in the middle. We don't have to change anything. We don't have to make sure that it says RF because it automatically realizes that we should be RG, and it fully populates it. We worked six hours in week one, and we worked ten hours so far in week two, and notice that we have four hours on March the 2nd. So let's click on March the 2nd. There are the four hours we worked from noon to 4 p.m. As an employee, it's our responsibility to report to our supervisor how many hours we were scheduled to work. So we're going to click on the Remarks tab. And we can put either daily remarks each day, or we can just put pay period remarks, which makes it a little bit easier for you as an employee. And you need to type in that you were scheduled to work 20 hours this pay period. So put scheduled to work 20 hours in pay period 4. So we're going to type that in. And we're going to hit save. This pay period is fully worked. We worked our 20 hours. We're done for the pay period. So now as an employee, we must hit validate. So we're going to go ahead and validate it. And what this is doing is it's generating the information that you as an employee need to review to make sure that it's correct. It's going to basically look just like the timesheet summary did that we looked at on the regular timesheet, but this is the information that we put in as the employee. Notice that we've got six hours on the 26th, we've got 10 hours on the 1st, and we have four hours on the 2nd for a total of 20 hours. If you scroll down just a hair, you can see that we have remarks that we entered and that the timekeeper entered. So we see both sets of remarks that scheduled to work 20 hours in pay period 4. That lets everyone know that we were scheduled to work 20 hours and we truly worked it because there's 20 hours on the timesheet. If we scroll down a little bit more, again, it looks just like the timesheet summary did for the regular timesheet, but this is the subsidiary timesheet. And we have our timesheet profile, and when we scroll down a little bit further, we see our activity log that we as an employee has done, and now we must click Affirm. Affirm says, I certify that the schedule, time worked, and all that is true to the best of my knowledge. Notice that at the very top, the timesheet is now validated and it's ready for the supervisor to certify. So we're going to go ahead and jump forward to pay period five. So we're going to drop this down to pay period five. And when we change pay periods, we must hit go. And we put in a leave request for pay period five for both days. And notice that if we click back on our schedule, we put leave in for the 8th for 10 hours and the 15th for 10 hours. So what we need to do as an employee for this pay period is hit the remarks button. And in the pay period remarks, all we have to do as an employee is that we say that we took leave for the entire pay period. So we're going to put took leave for the entire pay period for a total of 20 hours. Then typing all of that, we can hit save. And now we have finished up, and notice that there's no time posted, but that's okay, because we're about to log out as the employee, and we're going to log in as a supervisor, 
and the supervisor will approve that leave for us. All right, so let's go ahead and log out because we're done. And now we're going to log in as a supervisor. So as a supervisor for those who supervise employees on an MSLE, the first thing that we're going to look at is it's going to log you in as a supervisor. We're going to go ahead and look at the employee leave request. And because as a supervisor, we supervise, we supervise more than just the MSLE, we're only going to be concerned with the MSLE. So it's the very last record. It's the annual leave for 20 hours for our full-time position MSLE. So we're going to click on the pending. And when we get that pulled up, it will look like the leave request that we as the employee just entered. Except we can't make changes because we're the supervisor. We're going to review it. And we're going to scroll to the bottom. And we're going to hit approve. When we hit approve, as a supervisor, we're going to receive the blue banner of success saying that it was approved. But we're going to get an additional one that says it was either added to the employee timesheet or was not, depending on what's going on with that timesheet. And notice this one here says the leave request was successfully updated. The leave time for 3A has been added to the user's timesheet and the user's subsidiary timesheet for both the 8th and the 15th. It's important as a supervisor that we review that to make sure that those hours were in fact added to the timesheets. And both of these lines have been added to both timesheets, so we are good. So now we're going to go back to our supervisor main menu. And this time, instead of doing leave request or pending pay request, we're going to go into select employees. Because we want to certify the timesheet just for the MSLE employee. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the user ID in as MSLE 494-1. Again, we're in a training database, so we have unique names here. And when we hit search, it's going to bring up the timesheets that are ready for us to do. All right, so we're going to certify pay period three. And we're going to hit certify selected. Okay. And when it gets pulled up, again, it's going to look very similar to the timesheet summary that, both, that we looked at as the employee. And we can scroll down after we review everything and make sure that it's right and hit certify. If it's wrong for, for what you're thinking, please reject and decertify and send it back to either the timekeeper or the employee so that that timesheet can be corrected before it gets sent the first time. But if we, and notice that at the very top it does say certify. If we scroll down a little bit, I didn't cover it. Notice that the employee is scheduled to work 20 hours this pay period in the remarks section. This is the regular timesheet that the timekeeper has done. If we go back to select employees, we would do the subsidiary timesheet, but it's not validated by the employee for pay period three. So we can't, it's not ready for us as a supervisor. If you see the subsidiary timesheet, and you know that it's a subsidiary timesheet because it has the little S in parentheses, please work with that employee to get it certified. I hope I've addressed all your questions today. There will, these videos will be on the SharePoint site for you to review later on, and there will be more information provided on the SharePoint site. So let's go ahead and log out. And this time, let's click on My Favorites and go to Share Daytask Portal. I'm going to go ahead and show you the SharePoint site that I'm talking about. 
Notice that when you get here, it has videos. And if you do not know how to log into VATAS, there is a link right here that says click here to log into VATAS. That will take you into the production site. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have our newsletter right here, and we have a little bit of other information on this particular screen. Under user roles, we have user role specific assistance. As an employee, you click on there, and when you scroll down a little bit and get all the videos loaded, this video is for a regular employee, and it'll walk you through the same stuff that I just took you through on the MSLE. And then we have little short five-minute videos for specific leave requests and timesheets and user IDs. Under the supervisor and TL approver role, when it loads right here, it brings you in again to a video that's about an hour long for this one. But then if you want to figure out how to do individual information, just click here to look at the leave request, premium case, all this, and it shows you how. And most of these videos here are less than five minutes. I hope you've enjoyed today's training. Have a great day.